Hi, this is Shirley here from Blossoms on the Go. I would just like to wish all the lads uh, the best of luck with the championships this year and hope they get on. Brilliant. Best of luck. We are open uh, Monday to Saturday, half nine to half five. And um, just to let you know, here in Hermitage in Innes, uh, call us, check out our Facebook page for any contact. Hi, this is Shirley here from Blossoms on the Go. I would just like to wish all the lads uh, the best of luck with the championships this year and hope they get on. Brilliant. Best of luck. for all those who want to see the programs it is on their uh, GA website the programs are all in that and also you can purchase the games by going onto the website and clicking on to the Clare TV link here with me today doing analysis is a man who is known to Clare hurling supporters throughout the world a man that scored the golden goal in 1995 a man perhaps who had hamstring problems that delayed his career a bit but he still kept hurling with Tober on even last year or the legendary Eamon Taff thanks Mike I suppose a strange evening here this evening Mike you know the atmosphere I suppose is a bit is a bit funny, um, you know, not to have a crowd here, I suppose, for a, the first round of the senior championship is, I suppose, it's, it's not great for the, the mums and dads and the brothers and sisters that had loved to be here to see their, their, their the boys playing, you know. So um, a strange evening, but look at a great evening and look forward to a great game. The conditions here tonight are absolutely superb. We know we had rain this morning, quite an amount of rain, but the pitch here is absolutely brilliant. Still will, in a couple of minutes, go through the team selections with you, but there's a number of players of note that will be to the fore for both sides tonight. We know, obviously, the big key talking point would be the absence of Peter Duggan. If this, if Peter was here, I suppose a lot of people would be suggesting Tony would win the game, but I'm sure Tony have had time to maybe deal with that. So maybe, Eamon, who would you think would be some players that would know it for both sides would be involved tonight? I suppose, look, at you, you have some great players on both sides. I, I know you mentioned Peter Duggan, not mi you know, that he's missing, but but look, at maybe a new kid will be born for Clooney Quinn this evening, you know, and, and it's an evening like this, beautiful evening, the pitch is absolutely beautiful, so, you know, why not let someone else step into his shoes, you know, I know it's a, it's a big pair of boots to fill, but um, hopefully, hopefully someone else will, will fill his boots on, on that side. On Dinah Kilimona's side, I suppose, look, at there's, there's five or six new young fellas on the go, they're 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 right good lads, you know. Um, then you have the likes of Davy Fitz, you have the McCarthys, you know, uh, the Foodies. So, look at looking forward to a great battle between the two of them, you know. In relation to the 
I suppose the, the conditions here are breezy. It's going to be a very difficult game for both sides. It's supposed to continue with the breeze. As I said, the conditions are a little bit stiffy due to the weather conditions we had er here earlier today. I suppose key factor of uh, one player, I suppose, of note, they will be definitely to the fore for Ryan and and we'll be Davis Sherl. What do you think of his placement at centre forward, Eamon? Yeah, I've always liked to see Davy up in the forwards. Of Davey, you know, he's a, he's a real powerhouse when he when he starts to attack. Um, he he can open up defences. You know, um, he has a lazy long stride in him, but very hard to keep with him. So he could do damage. There's no no doubt about it. He could do serious damage this evening if he can get on the ball. Um, Clooney Quinn will obviously have Killian Ke Duggan perhaps dying now to mark him. So I suppose for Clooney they're going to have to decide how to deal with that. Those other players of note, as I said to you, all these matches are. The five matches in Cusick Park are live on Clare TV over the weekend and also the three games in Six Mile Bridge will be deferred along with the eight games. Well, um, I suppose, Eamon, for yourself, you've had a number of great days here in Cusick Park. I suppose you trained here in the Halcyon days in 95, 97. I suppose does it bring back memories coming out here even now just as a spectator? Ah, sure, of course it does. You know, The minute that ball is thrown in, the hairs will stand on the back of their head. Sure, I'd love to be playing, for sure, and still love to be playing, you know. So it does bring back great memories and the one thing I think I said to Sean Chapman as we're coming in the gate there, how is it that Cusick Park looks twice as big as any other pitch in Clare, you know? But the ground is beautiful, beautiful evening for us and let's hope for a good game. Organisation here today tonight is absolutely top class. The spectators are just coming in now. I suppose it's difficult times. Hopefully in the next month or so the spectator level will incri increase dramatically. I know in the six six counties have brought up to 400, hopefully in the 26 counties maybe with government intervention or G intervention that these numbers may go up. Um, the certain players, I suppose, of note that will probably come to the fore for the, t the two management teams of, I suppose, Fergal Hegarty is in charge of uh, Ina Kilimon and Mike Duggan in charge of Tony Quinn. I suppose Jason McCarthy and Aidan McCarthy. What do you make of those two players for Ina Kilimon? I should look at, uh, you'd go anywhere to see Aidan McCarthy, you know, he has he has proven himself already and he's still only a young fella, you know. Um, Jason has been there for a, a couple of years, a pure powerhouse as well when he gets going, you know. So um, I look at any any club team, I'd love to have the two of them, two of them on, the, on their team, you know. I suppose veteran Fergal Lynch, a man who I suppose campaigned for Clare and Clooney for the last 20 years, is now lining out in the full forward line. I suppose, would you think that they'll probably target him or will they play the ball and use him just as, just as a target man for the ball or would he be more of a scoring target, a scoring man? I suppose Fergal, look at he has a lot of it done at this stage and has been a great you know, stalwart for, for Clooney Quinn. Um, I, I'd be thinking at this stage he's put in there at full forward to, to annoy the rest of them around there and hold up the ball and give it to the runners passing and Look at he's still well capable of maybe sticking a ball in the net or maybe getting two or three points, you know. So, but I do think his role this evening will be to try and hold it up and give it to the younger fellows around him, give it to the runners, and let them take the shot. If there was some team in the senior championship this year that you might think would be a, a dark horse, a team that maybe we haven't been looking at so far in recent years that might make a break, or some young team that's come through, is there anyone in your, in your mind outside of the perennial favourites? I suppose look at here this evening Ina Kilimona uh, are the team I suppose that everyone is talking about you know they've great successes at under 21 a minor with the last couple of years so they're right up there you know and, and maybe it's time for them now to come on and show us what they are capable of doing they have a great manager over them a great backroom team so they, they're my team that I, I think are going to give a fair shout look it will be hard still to beat the likes of Bellier, Six Mile Bridge, Cratlow will be there you know so hopefully someone new can come through you know I suppose from a playing perspective, how do you feel it is different now for a team? It's easy for us to say this here, we're just commentating and people are coming in to watch it. Is it difficult in this situation that you're just coming up here, you're rocking in, you have your boots on you, you have nowhere to go, no dressing rooms, you're, you're being sort of steward to what you do and can't do with your own water bottles. How would you feel that's going to be com compound in a team, especially with water breaks? Yeah, sure, look, it's all new. It's going to be new for everyone, you know. Um, I know when I was playing, well, you always like to get to the dressing room maybe a good maybe 40 minutes before games and look at that has changed. I was watching the boys there, they're walking in now, they're togged out, they're just doing a small bit of a warm up there and ready to go. So it's it's a different ball game, it's going to be the same for everyone. Um, you know, so so look at, hopefully it won't make any difference and w we'll get a great game of The conditions now, I suppose, there's a threat of rain coming in over the ground. Um, we, as I said, we had a lot of it earlier on the day. The, w the referee here is Wayne King, a man of well experienced. He's got good linesmen with him. What impact do you think the referee will have today now? And I suppose having to control things and maybe even watch water bottles and everything else, the, the new rules, I suppose, in terms of hygiene and all that? 
Yeah, she look at Wayne as a well experienced referee at this stage, you know, and I'm sure he's going to get plenty of help from his linesmen and other stewards around, you know. So, um, look at these precautions have to be have to be taken on board and they have to be done. And I know it'll be a little bit harder for Wayne, but he he's well up for it, well up for it. If you were to call it to in just in a nutshell, what are the two or three things you think today that might turn the game in one team's favour or another team's favour? I know. We could talk. We probably what we discuss now could probably be totally different at half time. What are the couple of things you might say, or the key player on one side or another that might determine the result in, in at the end of the day? Well, I suppose we have mentioned about Peter Duggan already that he's missing for Clooney Quinn. Look, it's going to be a mighty mountain for them, I suppose. But look, if I know Clooney Quinn, they won't give in. And I know Peter is away and the whole lot, but they'll they'll fight all the way to the end. This game won't be as easy for Ina Kilimona as you think. Even though, look, at the, they are the favourites. They're the young kids coming. Um, so I, I think Aina Kilimona will edge it maybe four or five points. But it won't be that much between. 20, 20, 20. And thank you very much. Right, and now we'll... we'll all avid listeners on Clare FM. And we also welcome listeners to Clare TV on a simultaneous live commentary of this opening round games. All the welcomes in the world, but most important of all, welcome back. It's hard to believe that it's Brittany Park and Kevin was our last live commentary with an electric atmosphere on that particular day. We won't quite reach, I would imagine, that atmosphere because we now live in strange times where kisses, hugs and handshakes have been replaced by two gloves, one mask and two metres apart. But the games go on in this hectic hurling weekend. I'm joined on analysis this evening by the man himself, Davy Fitzgerald, joining us here live on the commentary box. The games are back. I was talking to you about 10 weeks ago. You told me there and then the games would be back. You don't mind saying just on this occasion, and not occasion, you were right, but it's <laughs> when you were. <laughs> uh, you don't say that too often, <laughs> to tell you the truth, but um, no, it's, I, I met a few of the players just on the way in there this evening, and, and they said, isn't it great to be just going back out in the field and having a game, you know, and that's what it's about. I suppose when I was asked to do this thing at the start, um, I, I was thinking about it, and I said, uh, do you know what I will, because it's the only way I'll get him to see the game. <laughs> So that's why he's here. Let me give us a line out to both sides. First of all, the man from Clooney Quinn. In goal is Keith Hogan. A full back line of Brian McInerney, Shane McNamara at full back will captain the side, and his brother Rory will wear the number four jersey. A half back line of Connor Harrison, Killian Duggan at centre half back, and another one of the McNamara men, Mike, is on the left wearing number seven. In the middle of the field is Ryan Taylor, and then Luke Harrison will wear number 19, his midfield partner. Wearing number 30 at right half forward will be Seamus uh, Conroy wearing number 20 at centre half forward will be Owen O'Brien and Jimmy Corey wearing 9 will be on the left top of the right wearing number 22 will be Ronan O'Donnell Fergal Lynch will wear 14 at full forward and Ulrich O'Sullivan at top of the right will wear the number 36 jersey Ina Kinnamona will line out as follows in goal is Eamon Foody full back line of Jerry Arthur wearing number 21 Sean Mahoney at full back and Keith White at 4 Keane McInerney Kevin Harris at centre half back and Jason McCarthy will make up the half back line in the middle of the field Shane McCarthy and Darren Cullinan half forward line Aidan McCarthy David Fitzgerald at centre half forward and Seamus Foody wearing 12 top of the right is Keelan Guiler top of the uh, full forward is Evan McNamara and top of the left wearing number 17 will be Conor Hagerty Davey the games are back as you said now the pitch looks superb but why wouldn't it there's very little playing on pitches like that what way are teams going to approach this opening round game when we all know that the next round is the real thing Listen, uh, number one the pitch is probably as good as I've ever seen it um, I suppose the lack of action has, uh, has allowed it to be so good so the, the boys will actually really, really enjoy getting out there and playing. Um, the first round, listen, Sil, it's, it's a glorified challenge match. That's what it is, being honest about it. You'll go out and you'll do your best. And like it's the same, we're out tomorrow at Six Mile Bridge. And um, like we're playing a rogue, you'll be giving it 110%, but it's not the be all and end all. Personally, myself, I think the championship format is not a good format. Uh, I wouldn't be in, in favour of it. Um, so I wouldn't, I think. Have a missed the Clare Cup as we have all year, which is nine games. I felt the players deserved a bit better than just one or two games. That's my own personal opinion on it. Well, we are where we are right now, but for Ryan Kinnamon and for Clooney Quinn, you know, you think back there, there was a three years ago, Clooney Quinn, they came so close 
so close, looking down here to the right hand goal under the old scoreboard. That strike off the crossbar from Peter Duggan, who incidentally is tuned in and listening to us all the way somewhere in some corner of Australia, jumping around like a kangaroo, I'd say, <laughs> if Clooney could happen to pull this one out of the fire, but certainly next weekend. They came that close to that crossbar, you know, three years ago. That would have been a massive, massive victory uh, for them on that occasion. And then last year, Ina Kilimona just missing out, I think, at semi final stage. So close, but not close enough at the moment. Yeah, well, s firstly, um, Peter will be a massive loss. Um, Peter Duggan is, he's one of our top players in Clare. Um, an exceptional talent, um, a great young man as well. He'll be, he'll be badly missed by Clooney, and that's no, no doubt about that. And it's very interesting to see today, C Sil, how will Clooney cope without him, that big aerial presence, what he brings to the team. So Clooney are going to have to step it up. Probably the best team we met in the championship last year um, from a six-mile bridge point of view would have been Aina Kilnamona. I, I honestly felt we were lucky to get over them. Um, they controlled the game for a lot of it. Um, they used the ball really well. They're tenacious. So um, this seems to be a good game. So it will, it'll, it'll, be, um, it'll be a tough one. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing how they are having not really played any competitive games. We've seen David Fitzgerald line out, uh, not, not, uh, not yourself, David, uh, line out, you know, in the, in the half-backs for a clear point of view. But he brings something different to the Eineck in the Mona side at centre half-forward, the power of him driving through the centre and certainly opens up an opposing defence. Yeah, he lined out at wing forward, I think, for clear this year against Wexford. Um, uh, so he did, like, he, he's... David is a good hurler, no matter what story. He's, he's a great hand at him and... He, he, like you look at Peter Douglas threat in the air, David Fitzgerald is very, very similar to that, okay? Good in the air, good going forward. Um, so he'll add that bit of punch up front, but alternatively, if he needs to go back, can go back as well. So he's a very versatile player for him. Um, just looking forward to seeing what kind of way they'll both set out today. Like, Ina Kilimone used the ball very well. Will they keep it short? Will they keep it going? Will Clooney go direct and hit Fergal Lynch on the edge of the square? So there's a lot of stuff in front of us still that I'm looking forward to seeing. You know, I spoke about David Fitzgerald. Now go back to the men that should be picking him up. Is then Killian Duggan. Killian, huge experience. Yeah. We'll pause at the moment, David, for uh, our, our round of being playing down as both sides are down on the field. Um, just to pick up that point you were talking about there, Sil, um, Killian Duggan probably picking up David Fisher. That will be um, an interesting battle. Like <coughs> My view last year was Killian was played up front and Fergal was playing the backs. Probably didn't work out um, the way Sean had hoped for, for Clooney Quinn last year. Um, Killian will be a big advantage back to back for him as I think Fergal will be up front as well. But that battle will be intriguing still to watch that today. Absolutely. Well, both sides now going in. Wayne King is the man in the middle of the field. The man from the county of Cork now with St. Joseph's Tour of Airfield and his linesman on left and right. Umpires moving back into the centre. The first of a bumper weekend is about to get underway here on, in Cusick Park. Looking down here to the right-hand side, there's players. We're looking back down here to see there's numbers all over the place here in the middle of the field. So let's see. We do know that Luke Harrison is in the middle of the field right there at the moment. Jerry Arthur named as 21. He's in the middle of the field as well as the referee Wayne King. Looking back here, scoreboard back to our left-hand side here, getting ready for the shot. Looking down also, David Fitzgerald in the aforementioned Killian Duncan coming very, very close to the throw in. Out in the middle of the field, Wayne King getting this opening round championship game. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye as best we can on Clondara and the market as well. But right now, it's Aidan McCarthy on the ball for uh, Eineck in the morning, striking this 
Huffman off the right with the breeze of his back sends it in. It's going to be close. The ball goes inches wide to the right hand side, and that was very, very nearly a rapid opening score for the championship of 2020. Davy the poker goes to the far side of the field, and once again it's Tony Quinn placing the ball right down into the center at the moment. Picked up down there by Owen O'Brien. He strikes the ball from way out the field. Fergal Lynch is inside under the ball comes out. The inside the Ulrich Sullivan trying to get the ball across to the far side of the field. Seamus Conroy is there trying to get the ball away, and he strikes that ball in. The ball goes in over to the far side of the field, and the referee Wayne King is going in there at the moment just to get an eye on what's happening inside. Yeah, the thing that just struck me there was the use of the ball by Clooney Quinn. Maybe last year they were a bit more direct, just that first passage of play. You can see it there. Short little ball, probably miss hit. He was probably going for a score, ended up with Fergal inside, and uh, a result in 65, but it'll be interesting to see if Clooney stay using the ball that way. 65 it is, and it's going to be Killian Duggan standing over this one, dead straight in front of the goal, striking into the town end here in Cusick Park. The, the, the misty rain is be just beginning to fall here as Killian now study looking up in front of him on the uh, left hand side as we look down on near the uh, scoreboard in here on the far side of the field. Everybody waiting, referee on the far side of the field. He's tried to strike this when it's high, it's dropping in. The umpires are not doing to each other and the white flag is raised as the ball goes straight over the bar for the opening score here in the park with exactly 90 seconds gone. There's a fast and furious puck out from Eamon Foody down into the centre. Breaking ball trying to get across to the far side of the field. It breaks into Seamus Foody. Gets it in but the ball once again going to the left and it's going wide. One point for Clooney Quinn. No score for Eineke and Lamona who are playing with a st strong enough breeze here in this first half. Puck out to Ryan Taylor on the far side of the field. He has time to control the ball. Sends that ball right into the wide open space. And once again, Fergal uh, is waiting for that ball. Now it breaks out to the far side of the field, trying to get the ball away, coming away with it and striking the ball down along the far side of the field. But Ryan Taylor puts out the stick, blocks, breaks up the Ida Kilnamona attack, sending it right into the edge of the goal. Jason McCarthy's in there trying to control it. The ball goes back to the ground. Seamus Conroy trying to get control of it. But again, the Ida Kilnamona man coming away with the ball and striking it into the middle of the field. That's a brilliant ball right down into the centre to David Fitzgerald from way out the field. It's high, it's dropping in, and that one goes in and goes straight over the bar. Side level here in the park with exactly two and a half minutes gone. Yeah, the one thing Killian can't afford to do, he can't afford to sit back in the 65 uh, and let David Fitzgerald come and get that short ball. And especially with the breeze like that, if you leave David Fitzgerald loose, he's going to hurt you. It's a very strong breeze holding the ball in the air as it comes into the middle of the field again. Seamus Foody going up. He's the man that caught the ball, but he was fouled as referee Wayne King, and it's going to be a free once again. And it's going to be Jason Aidan McCarthy that's going to take this one practically in the dead centre of the field, inches away from it, and about 15 metres in from the line, right down here in front of us. The breeze in his back. I don't think distance will be any problem whatsoever to Aidan McCarthy on this occasion as he steadies himself, the familiar style that. Uh, he's become known of and one of the most promising hurlers indeed in the county of Clare. Steadying himself right now, white helmet on the head as he looks up and uh, again there's a Clooney Quinn man right in front of him but now he's about to strike this one. The ball is high, he's in the air, it's dropping in, is there a tail on this one? The ball goes in but it goes to the left of the goal and it goes wide. One pint apiece here with just over uh, three, coming up to four minutes gone. Your commentary is compliments of course of our good friends at Blossoms on the Go in Herbertage so greetings there to Shirley and all the staff and their wishes for the entirety of the uh, championship here in this first round. Aidan McCarthy about to strike this one once again on the run and there's no mistake about this one as he slots the ball straight over the bar inside the 45 metre line to give Heineken in the morning the lead, two pints to one. Yeah, Aidan McCarthy again, that's twice he's got the ball in Ram it. Um, he's an exceptional young player still, serious talent and... Um, I think Clooney are going to have to be a small bit tighter on this guy. Again, the puck out going to the far side of the field, and Owen O'Brien is one of the men that's under it. Now he's been picked up inside, and it comes out by Kevin Herra. Back into the centre, it goes to the far side of the field, still trying to get it away as Jerry Arthur, and Jerry Arthur eventually gets it down. Again, the attack goes to the far side, under that ball is Tony Quinn, captain Shane McNamara, and again, it's gone out over the line, and it's going to be a line ball. It's taken fast. Is it too fast? No, it's out to Ryan Taylor on the far side. He's been challenged out there by Darren Cullinan, gets away. 
Hoppa along the line on the far side of the field. Still the ball on the stick. Taps the ball into the wide open space. In there to the far side. Looking to the far side of the field. Trying to get the ball away. Again, Jimmy Curry was able to gain to come away with it. Now it's Clooney playing on the attack into the middle of the field. Yuri uh, O'Sullivan trying to get that ball away. But the ball rolled out into the middle of the field. Kelly and Duggan comes along. Gets the ball up to the far side. Switches the play across to Yuri O'Sullivan. Again, that ball goes across to Seamus Foody. Uh, Conroy. And he sends the ball in. And he sends it straight over. Again, the ball going to the left and wide on that occasion. As we look out, it's fast, it's down here to the far side. That's five minutes gone. It's two pints to one as the ball now drops into the hands out here outside to the far side of Evan McNamara, striking very tight angle. Again, the ball going across the goal. Two pints to one. It's Einick in the morning leading here with five and a half minutes gone. The pace is actually ferocious, they let's non stop going. Um, the last two shots I don't think were on, like shooting from the sideline like that. Maybe as, as well to recycle the ball a small bit more, like um, they're just two wasteful opportunities. That's an excellent puck out there from Keith Hogan, right into a very strong breeze here, setting up an attack once again to the far side of the field. The ball, Connor Harrison trying to get control of it. He leads it to Rory McNamara, and Rory sending the ball into the wide open space again, picked up out there, down corner, trying to get control of it. But Ryan Taylor has the ball in his hand. He has a look, he has a strike, he sends it in, and he sends the ball straight over the bar. Once again, six minutes gone, and the sides are left here in the park who said that the first round was going to be dead there's certainly a hectic pace here in QZ Park Davy. Well I think that has come still from like there hasn't been very many games this year so the lads are mad to get going and Ryan Taylor seems to have got on a good few balls already. And David Fitzgerald has this one. It looks very good from here. The umpire comes over. He raises the white flag. And David Fitzgerald, his second of the evening here, just picking up that ball outside the 45 metre line. Three pints to two. Einick in the morning lead. Again, it's going to be Keith Hogan inside in the goal, coming to this side of the field on this occasion, waiting for that breaking ball, trying to get it into the centre. It's going to be very close to the line, but it's kept in play and very well kept in play down here outside by Owen O'Brien, trying to get the ball into the centre, but now it's been tidied up. I'm back here to the far side by Shane McInerney. Shane McInerney, a long ball into the space, but Ian McCarthy goes up with the hand, gets the ball inside, now trying to get inside to the far side of the field. Now he strikes it again. That's a brilliant ball. Just getting inside, Mike, Mac Mike uh, McNamara. Ian McCarthy was the man controlling that ball and pops it over the bar. Once again, Ina Kinamona going back into the lead here. Double scores at four points to two. Seven minutes gone. Yeah, we're that's Ian McCarthy on the ball again and I know there's only seven minutes gone still but um, just looking at it now, we they just I clearly need to be a small bit tighter on Aidan McCarthy than they are and um, the same with David Fitzgerald. That's a very powerful half forward line. Again, Kelly and Duggan trying to go in there to break up the play, but now the play breaks up, and it goes to Brian McInerney, trying to get on the defensive for the Clooney Quinman, into the middle of the field, trying to get that ball away. Now it's put back to Jimmy Curry, trying to get through to the centre. He does that, still holding on to the ball. That's a brilliant run into the 20-metre right, trying to hand pass it. Wayne King says, play on. Ball there to be won, right in the middle of the field. Yuli Sullivan is in there, but it goes back to Jason McCarthy. McCarthy trying to get room to strike it. He does that and sets up a nine in the morning attack, but it should be, and it will be Connor Harrison. It was before First to the ball, couldn't get there in time, and the ball goes out over the line. It's going to be a line ball for Ryan, uh, for uh, Clooney Quinn on the far side of the field. Connor Harrison is the man with the ball on the far side and getting ready to take this one. The just the one thing I don't know if you've noticed, the Ina can one a half hour line seem to be coming really deep into midfield and even a serious gap inside in front of the inside line. And that's something that, that could prove very dangerous if, if they get a bit of direct ball inside there as well. If you watch it in general play, a lot of the guys are pushing right out there. Dave Fitzgerald is spending a lot of his time out of midfield. Dave McCarthy is going out and in. So they're trying to keep that gap as much as possible. It's probably based on the four points that David Fitzgerald and Aidan McCarthy got between them when they broke the line and popped the ball yeah. straight over the bar. There's going to be a line ball on the far side of the field. Your commentary compliments about blossoms on the go, uh, flowers into, of course, in Hermitage, and as we said, with us throughout the championship. And they've been with us before and looked after us as well. They're fantastic. And hopefully you get all your flowers there, Davy, for the winter flowers as well. <laughs> but we'll talk about those later on. And certainly not wintering down there in the middle of the field, trying to get that ball away. It's going to be Seamus Food but it's one back again to this side of the field picked up and again coming out with that ball to the far side of the field Ron O'Donnell with the ball he gets it across to the far side pops the ball into the centre it's a brilliant ball inside to Keelan Guiler he's trying to get this ball up he'll get a second opportunity he has a look he has a strike he sends the ball in and the umpire raises the white flag that's a super score from one of the promising players down here down here I think the umpire went for the white flag 
and uh, now the yeah, Wayne King has stayed. It is a point. You've got Mackie into the book. The ball going straight over the bar right now. Five points to two. Coming up to ten minutes gone in the opening half. Keith Hogan once again back on the goal and getting ready to move back to the centre of the goal. As we said, Clooney Quinn playing into a stiff enough freeze here in the park this evening. This high ball is dropping right down the side of the 65 metre line, trying to get that ball away and it's picked up outside by Darren Cullen. Darren Cullen trying to look up into the space he goes, trying to get that on the far side of the field. Shane McNamara coming out of it but loses that ball from way out the field. The ball is high but it goes in, it goes to the right of the goal and it goes wide. Exactly Coming up to ten and a half minutes gone, five points to two for Ina Kilnamona taking the lead. Keith Hogan once again back on the goal mount, waiting, to, looking around there, takes the shot puck out into the middle of the field, looking for Killian Duggan, goes up in the air, comes down with that ball, now scooping the ball right into the centre of the goal, trying to get that ball away, looking at the far side of the field, driving this ball into the space of goals. Fergal Lynch is inside, of the great work back out here in the middle of the field at the moment, trying to get that ball away, now gets it into the centre, Fergal Lynch is on this one, will he be looking for support, tries to strike it, half locked down, Jason McCarthy gets that breaking ball, great defensive work back there, back out to Darren Cullen, and Darren Cullen and putting the ball on the stick, time to look up and places the ball right down here to the centre referee, Wayne King has spotted a foul right down here in front of us, and uh, the man that was fouled of course was the that electrifying minor player last year, Connor Higgins, he's been fouled by the captain, uh, Shane McNamara shaking his head there, it's going to be a free, it's going to be Aidan McCarthy that's going to stand over this one right in our right line here with a scoreline, five points to two, but as I said, playing with a strong breeze here, Davey, in this opening half. Yeah, it's, um, it's a commanding lead. This, sh this should be um, straightforward for Ed McCarthy, and they're deserving of that four-point lead, no doubt about it. They, they definitely are um, shading it at the start of this. They look very pacey, they're up to the game and their passes are good. Yep, over the bar. Absolutely, straight over the black spot inside as the umpire once again raises the white flag. Six points to two here as we head into the 12th minute, coming up to the 12th minute of the game. Keith Hogan again getting good distance into the ball in this breeze, into the middle of the field, ball going to the ground, Darren Cullen almost had it in his hand, gets it out to the far side, but it comes out to Jimmy Curry, he's trying to drive the ball through the centre, looking for Fergal Lynch again, challenge inside, going to the ground, trying to get up. Utica Sullivan trying to arrive there as well on the far side of the field. Owen O'Brien is there. The referee goes in, breaks up the play. Is there going to be a throw ball? It's going to be a throw ball just in the uh, outside the 20 metre line. Players been asked to move away to the left and to the right here as Wayne King throws this ball in. It's going to be statement. He's picked up inside. Jerry Arthur almost getting the ball in his hand. Now it comes out to this side of the field, turning around, trying to strike this one and trying to get the ball inside to the far side of the field. Owen O'Brien trying to get it over. Carry star pulling the back to the referee and it's going to be a free right down here to our left hand side and again it's going to be an opportunity for uh, another attack Eamon Foody coming out of the goal to take this one and no doubt it would land right in around the edge of the square I was going to say the edge of the square and now it could possibly Don't go ask. There's no, I think will they, will they, I thought Aidan McCarthy might come back to take this one. It's just about 55 out from his own goal, and it's coming up to 13 minutes gone. Six points to two. Eamon Foodie may well get on the scoreboard, on the score sheet here in this opening round championship game here. 55 out from his own goal, a breeze at his back. Let's see what will happen with this one. And here he is. The ball is high in the air. It's dropping in. He has the distance, but the accuracy a little bit to the left, and it goes wide. It's still six points. To two, no doubt about it. I nick in the morning on top around this middle of the field here, uh, Davy, for this opening uh, 10 or 12 minutes. Yeah, that middle third has been dominated by I nick in the morning. Um, they're reading the ball a bit better and they're using it a bit better, even though they have a strong wind. It's going to be Keith Hogan. Once again, he's been busy in this opening uh, quarter of the game into the middle of the field, trying to get that ball away, being challenged out there outside, trying to get that ball in. He does. Is Shane McInerney back out to the far side of the field. It's an attack right through the centre, trying to control it. Connor Hegarty getting inside Rory McNamara out to the far side of the field. That's Keelan Guider trying to get control of it. He's been fouled and once again, it's going to be Aidan McCarthy on the place ball right outside, just outside the 45 metre line on the far side of the field. As we said, a busy week it is Clonard on the market in action in Six Man Ridge at the moment. We'll try and give you updates on that, and of course, other games throughout the weekend Wolf Tones and Clark Castle, Beacon and Whitecase, 
and uh, six mile bridge in a row tomorrow, Kilmeri Kratlos tomorrow as well, Crosheen and Bellier, that's on Sunday, and Broth for the Mills is here in the park tomorrow as well, so a busy, busy weekend, a busy weekend also coming up, of course, be many busy weekends, I think, for Aidan McCarthy coming up as well, but at the moment, on the far side of the field, it's going to be no market or leading to or th three points to seven is going to be for Clendara. Clendara seven, no market three, and that's after an opening, maybe 15 minutes in the bridge as the ball goes in. On that occasion, Davy, I was looking there at the screen, and uh, that one was going to the right mm -hmm. and going wide, six points to two. You could put your house on that one at this yeah. stage, but again, once again, it's coming away. Kevin Hare is driving forward for uh, Aina Kilnamona. Willie Hand passed it out to this side, tells the dummy that's a brilliant ball into Aidan McCarthy. A shot, oh, that's a superb ball inside the edge of the square again, coming away with it. And Connor Harrison, how did that ball stay out? Keith Hogan held Fellam inside, and now it comes out to Rory McNamara, clearing the lines out to the far side of the field, but it's going to drop out to Shane McInerney. He has time to pick it up yes I look now it goes to Kevin Hare pops the ball into the center it goes now it comes out to Keelan Guyler trying to get room turning out to this side strikes the ball from way out the field it's high it's dropping in and the ball goes straight over the bar referee Wayne King allowing advantage there Keelan Guyler was the man on the ball so what we thought was a simple tap over free almost resulted in a goal but it ended up as a pint seven pints to two 15 and a half minutes gone yeah um listen Firstly, Aidan McCarthy should have scored that ball. It's right in front of the goal. That's the one thing he has to he has to correct. He's had two frees, in my opinion, he, sh he should be scoring. In his general play, there's no doubt in Aidan McCarthy is a serious operator. Um, so just needs to tidy up on that. The goal opportunity that, that came, came from Kevin Herr, like who's centre-back, breaking up the field. They went to him. Aidan McCarthy made a lovely run. They should have finished it. Like the score right now should be probably one seven to two points or one six to two points. That's that's what it should be at the moment, and that does reflect what we've seen. Say that that reflects the pattern of play we have seen. How much is the breed? We're, we're actually at the moment we're on the new um, water break with about fifteen sixteen minutes gone in the game. That's what's been a uh, fifteen and a half minutes gone on the game. So uh, you know sometimes it breaks momentum. There's no doubt about that. But then again, with the times we're in, it's understandable. Listen, uh, in the times we're in, this is part of it. Um, but like this couldn't come fast enough for Clooney, I'll be honest with you. They're just after surviving a scare there. They're not at the pitch of this game yet. They're not at the pitch of this game yet. Um Einikin and Moan are using the ball a bit better. Um so they are and if they converted the scores they should have it, it probably should be about one eight to two or three points at the moment. Okay, well as we said, I was going to say that we're going on a tea break, but uh, it's on a water break and again Ina Kilimona going back out onto the middle of the field as well. So Wayne King taking control of that outside in the middle of the field. It's Clonlara eight pints, it's the Markham and Fergus four, and it's Scarif one eight, it's Tulla two pints with nine minutes gone in the intermediate. And Jack is the man keeping us up to date here, right behind us at the moment. So it's going to be key Hogan just going back on the goal line once again getting ready for the puck out will it change for uh, Clooney Quinn uh, but as we said they're playing into a stiff enough breeze here in the park thankfully the rain has gone Ryan Taylor goes up he's back in, in full action being challenged out there aside by Darren Cullinan goes to the ground it's going to be a free for Clooney Quinn now this is about 65 out from the goals and I'm sure if Peter Duggan is tuned into us he's already off the chair back in Australia somewhere but uh, I'm afraid he's a bit too far away on this occasion it's going to be Killian Duggan is going to stand over this one and Ryan Taylor has been impressive for Clooney Quinn in this opening 16 minutes just taking a knock there but it's going to be Killian Duggan that's going to stand over this one the breeze is, is, is strong enough now Davey in fairness to Clooney Quinn it's stiff enough it's holding the ball there and we can see the way Einick and the Moan are playing the fast ball suits them into the wide open full forward line yeah well they're, they're doing a mix it like it's they're pulling out their half hour line at times hitting it deep in front of the the young lads inside there um which is working and then other times it's just short outside and shoot it over the bear Killian Duggan it is, motionless right down here in front of us, uh, at one metre inside the 65 metre line and a very tricky free it is for him, he's looking, he's taking his time on this occasion, this would be a massive strike for Clooney Quinn, it's high, is there a tail on it, the raise is going well to the right and it's going wide, seven points to two, Ina Kilimone lead here with exactly 17 minutes gone, the puck out once again from Eamon Foody coming down to this side of the field and going up for it and getting that one into his hand is Evan McNamara, he goes to the ground, always taking back, but again Shane McNamara coming out with it, getting it out to Killian Duggan at centre half back, scooping the ball once again into the centre, picked up outside by Jimmy Curry. Jimmy Curry is trying to get through the centre.
centre, striking the ball. It's going to land right inside in the edge of the square. Fergalinch trying to get in there inside. The ball inside, waiting around the goal inside. Ronan O'Donnell was in there. He was the man. Now it comes out to Seamus Conroy. Seamus Conroy trying to get the ball back. He's been pulled and it's going to be a free in for Clooney Quinn on the 20 metre line down here to our left hand side. And uh, the man that looks like he's going to take it is going to be Owen O'Brien. He's the man with the ball in his hand and he's going to take this one just outside the 20 metre line. But that's probably just to suit himself and to, to cut down the angle ever, ever so slightly. Fergal Lynch is making a dummy run here to this side of the field. Will he take it in his hand? He gets the ball into his hand. Now he's surrounded and the ball comes back out. Eureka Sullivan is something that didn't. Uh, if it worked, if it worked, if it, but it was only a tap over free on that occasion. But in fairness, it worked. Uh, I remember it worked a couple of years ago beyond in Shannon against Peakley in the championship. That's exactly what happened. But it worked on that occasion, but that was a tap over. I don't agree with you. That I was a tap over. 7 2. <coughs> That point would have bought it seven three. I, I think they needed a score. I, I just I just don't see that one. There's a time and a place. I don't think that was it. Connor Harrison facing his own goal, trying to get that ball into his hand. He does that, K tries to come out, strikes the ball up along the line to this occasion. Once again, they're going for it. Again, the ball breaking. Fergal Lynch was in there in the middle of it, still in there in the middle of it as well, trying to get that ball away of a Seamus Conroy. But the ball comes back to this side, back to Keelan Guilar. It's high, it's dropping in, but it's curling to the left-hand side. He's been busy in the number 13 jersey, right down there. And again, the uh, Clooney Quinn manager, Mike Duggan, urging the players on. Who said there was no bite in this one? Out to the middle of the field as the ball comes across, trying to get that ball away. A great delivery out to this side field. Again, Clooney Queen on the attack, striking that ball from way out the field. It's high. Fast it's dropping in. That's a superb score right off the hand of Ronan O'Donnell. He, we saw him in action last year. He came right across the 45-metre line, and just when he had just slightly enough room, pops the ball straight over the bar. But the puck out will come right down into the middle. Being picked up out here. Again, pulled back. Immediately pulled back by down here to our left hand side it's eight points to three there's 19 and a half minutes gone and the man Connor Higgerty popped up and straight over the bar yeah there was two great <laughs> passes of the play so it was um, from both sides two great scores um, but you see the long ball down from Foodie a massive puck down the field straight to Conor Hagerty and what a score. You can't afford to give that, that young man that space. Absolutely, but Ike, five points, killing in a five points in the Intermediate Championship as well. And uh, as we said, a lot, a lot, a lot of local derbies this weekend at both senior, intermediate and junior level as well. Wayne King moving the ball forward on this occasion for another free for Ina Kinnamona and for Aidan McCarthy with a scoreline telling us 8-3 it is. 20 minutes gone in this opening half and this opening game in the park in the Senior Hurling Championship. Five in total in Cusick Park over the weekend and three in O'Garney Park in Six Mile Bridge. Aidan McCarthy steadying himself 55 out from the goal, practically dead straight in front of it. And now, as Davy is pointing to me, he needs to get the mindset back in action here. Now he steadies this one in and pops it straight over the bar. Absolutely stretching the Ina Kinnamona lead. It's nine points to three, 20 and a half minutes gone he's back in action but Keith Hogan is back in action he's been he must have poked out the ball about 15 times so far in this game out to the far side of the field picked up outside by Unico Sullivan trying to get away from Jason McCarthy but McCarthy comes in wins the ball sets up this attack there's going to be a breaking ball right inside in the middle of it Shane McNamara coming out Connor Harrison coming out with this one trying to strike it he does into the attack it goes but it's picked up inside by Gerardo Gerardo right back out into the middle of the field right into the hands of Keen McInerney from way out but it goes into the hands at the other end of the field to goalkeeper Keith Hogan to cross to the far side. Fergal Lynch is odds on to win this one. He does. He wins the ball in the 65. He gets it out to Killian Duggan who's making the run through the centre. Can he get control of it? He has the ball in his hand. He's looking for assistance out here in the middle of the field. He gets that ball across to the far side but again the Ina in the morning man. Gerardo winning that ball. Down again to the side of the field. Picked up and again a switching ball across. Connor Harrity. That's a brilliant ball to David Fitzgerald. In and sight to Evan McNamara. Has to be. It is the goal into the back of the net. Evan McNamara, what a sweeping attack from Heineke in the morning, right down into the centre. Some great runs, and Evan McNamara, right on with 14 on his back, completely slotted the ball into the back of the net. Super move. It's 1-9 one one to 3 points, 22 minutes gone, first half. Well, if you look at it, Heineke in the morning are very slick still, using that ball. Short ball around, and you can't afford to leave a player like... Um, David Fisher loose, so you can't put the moves are slick, um, they're using the ball very well, and they're probably well deserving of their lead.
It's going to be a free in for uh, Clooney Queen right in the middle of the field and it's going to be Killian Duggan once again to take this one. Again looking out, just getting the towel at the moment just to uh, wipe the hands as the mist comes back once again in Cusick Park at the moment. As we said, this is a first round uh, championship game. There is a, a lot of bite in it, a lot more than we expected in it. But really and truly, Davey, the second round is going to be but if this is what we're judging in the first round, there's going to be a phenomenal pace to the second round when it's a knockout championship on that occasion. We'll stay with Kitty and Duggan for just a moment. And our commentary is compliments of uh, Blossoms on the go, Hermitage Garden Centre. As we said, it's the place to go. It's going to be Kitty and Duggan dead straight in front of the goal. 64 63, 64 metres out from the goal. Down to the town end here. As this ball is high in the air, is it swinging? The umpire has waved his hands as the ball goes to the right and it goes wide. 1-9 to 3. It's the Eineck in the morning leading with seven minutes to go at the half time. And again, the ball is poked out. Out to Keelan Geiler on the far side of the field. Over the right shoulder again. It's high. Is it accurate? The ball goes in. It goes to the left and it goes wide. Connor Harrison certainly is his hands full on the far side of the field on that occasion. But again, a very open play. Once again, it's Keith Hogan with the puck out to this side of the field again. Fergal Lynch is under. The ball breaks behind, trying to get that ball, but again, swept up by Keane McInerney. Takes the shoulder out over the line. It's going to be a free. Once again, Aidan McCarthy going back inside his own 65 metre line, getting ready to take this one. And uh, right down here in front of us, Fergal Hergerty and Ron Nolooney with their hands behind their back. And uh, right in front of him is going to be Aidan McCarthy about to take this one. It'll probably land in around the edge of the square, I would imagine, unless some player makes a run. Let's see what happens. The breeze is back, coming up to take this one. Now moving back from the ball, he was standing over him. Of course, when he was closer to the goals, but right now he's standing back and going to give this one everything. Who said it would land in around the square? There's nearer to the square than Innes he drives this one in, but it goes to the left and it goes wide. One nine to three pines. I nick in the morning lead with 24 minutes gone here in this first half. Yeah, and I nick in the morning have had a few wides as well on top of that, you know. So um, they're, they're definitely well in command here. Absolutely, out to the middle of the field, we'll have updates on scores for you, again we're keeping an eye on so many games, way out the field once again goes the ball from Aidan McCarthy and he pops it over the bar, Aina Kenamona, one goal and ten points, it's Clooney Quinn, three points, with almost 25 minutes gone here, he's the man that's doing a lot of damage around the middle of the field, but then again, that's exactly what we expected. Yeah, he is doing a lot of damage, but also said, watch the Aina Kenamona forwards, they're pulling in tight, they're hitting the ball outside them all the time, they're not hitting the ball direct at them, they're used to the ball is very intelligent, really good. So it is. So I'm um, the way I nick in the morning are playing. If you watch the three guys even inside there right now, say so they're playing in that center, so they're playing the ball maybe 20 30 yards outside them. They're getting to run in, run onto the ball the whole time. So it, it's very clever play. And in fairness, Fergal Hagerty and his team they, they're well coached in, in what they've done. Great work down there by Luke Harrison winning that free, uh, which Killian Duggan is going to take for Clooney Quinn. This one's about, again, 55 out, maybe 10, 15 metres in from the line on the far side of the field. I was going to say facing the crowd on the uh, terracing stand, but uh, as you now know, not a single person to be seen that isn't wearing a high-vis jacket in the park at the moment. So, But it's going to be Killian Duggan that's lining up to take this one again into the breeze, into the goal end, and again, Eamon Foody inside in the goal mouth at the moment. 110 to 3 points. Ina can the morning lead. Can Killian Duggan do something with the scoreboard back to the left hand side? It's high, it's dropping in. Both umpires looking at each other at the moment. They're coming out as the ball goes in and it goes straight over the bar. It's 110 to 4 points with 4 minutes left. Again, the puck out is fast and furious. Down to the far side of the field. Rory McNamara trying to get control of it, but again, comes off the stick. It's going to be a line ball on the far side of the field. It's going to be for. Um, Eineke for, for uh, uh, in the morning on the far side. They're going to take it. Evan McNamara is making the trek over to the far side. He's going to place this ball uh, for the line ball on the far side of the field. Niall Malone is the linesman on the far side, of course. County final referee, of course, in the past. It's going to be this on the far side. Take waiting for it, waiting on the edge of the square once again. Keith Hogan guiding the ship in there as he comes up to take this one. Why did he go over to take it? That's exactly why he went over to take it. The cut was good, but the ball going across the goal 
to the right of the goal and it's going wide. One ten to four, Eineck and Lamont a lead with almost 27 minutes gone here and there's huge activity on the sideline. Mike Duggan instructing his players. Ball comes out again, once again, into the middle of the field. It comes out to Ryan Taylor, setting up there. Taylor going on to this one, trying to get onto the middle of the field, but again, it's going to be tidied up, coming out with this ball and swinging around there. It's going to be the man, Shane McInerney. He's been fouled, it's going to be a free. He's taken fast, down into the wide open space, trying to get this one, he's turning around. Connor Harrison coming out with the ball, trying to put the ball on the stick, looking for support, gets it out to Killian Duggan. Killian Duggan again, switching the play across to the far side of the field. Jason McCarthy trying to break that ball, trying to get that ball inside on the far side. Good walk inside by Luke Harrison once again. And again, it's going to be a free in. He has won the last two frees on the far side of the field. And Killian Duggan will make the trek up to where Wayne King is standing right on the spot. Free in for Cooney Quinn. They need every score possible at the moment. They're nine behind as we head into the closing two minutes of this uh, first half here. Again, wiping the hands. Pressure on, uh, on Killian Duggan, but all his frees have been well out from the goal at the moment, Davy. And as I keep saying it over and over, there's a tricky breeze there. You know, one or two has gone a bit haywire for him. This is a big free. Yeah, it is. But he's done pretty well, in fairness to Killian, with the frees. He's done okay. The one concern is still, um, still they have four points on the board at the moment. Has Killian got two or three of them? Like, it's they need to score from play a bit more than what they're scoring, uh, for sure. Against the wind or with the wind, it doesn't matter. They, they need to be scoring from play. Let's see how he gets on with this one. Killian Duggan standing over this one again, just outside the 45 meter line. It's high, it's dropping in, and again, the umpire coming out, and he's going to raise the white flag as the ball goes straight over the bar. It's Aina Kenamona, one goal and 10 points. It's Clooney Quinn, uh, five points to the scoreboard with 28 and a half minutes gone. Wayne King, referee, moving back out past the middle of the field as this long ball drops down into the center. Again, great work back there. It's high coming out. Jerry after coming onto this ball, again, placing the ball. Into the wide open space. That one has gone astray. It goes out to Fergal Lynch, trying to place it inside to Luke Harrison. Harrison trying to get the ball into his hand. He does. And now he does strike it. Ball high in the air. It's dropping very, very close, but it's not going to be close enough. It goes to the right. It goes wide. It falls into the hand of Eamon Foody inside in the goal mode, getting ready for the fast puck out as we move down here. This is coming to this side of the field once again, but it's going to be a Ryan Taylor that's going to break up this puck out. Wins the puck out for Clooney Quinn in the middle of the field. Chased by David Fitzgerald. He's still going and popping the ball right into the wide open space inside to Harrison trying to get inside Luke Harrison strikes as the shot goes in and the ball is skinning the top of the crossbar it sends the ball over the bar he's been very impressive in the last couple of minutes for Clooney Queen winning freeze winning the ball on that occasion and popping it over the bar 110 to 6 Ina Kilimona lead here with uh, coming up to the closing 30 seconds plus additional time here in this first half yeah, that's um, the last two points. It's it's good. They needed them big time, but they're in trouble here. Um, this should be a goal opportunity. And it's Ed McCarthy with a shot and yeah. the ball going into the back of the net once again. Keith Hogan could do nothing about it. Ed McCarthy winning the ball just outside the 20 meter line and uh, into the wide open space. The man that's causing the trouble. Two ten to six points it is as we move into additional time. I think the the, the long long puck out is causing them. Uh, trouble still like there's three or four very long ones come down and it's caused them bother uh, absolute referee Wayne King has blown the half time whistle here in Cusick Park it's 2-10 for Ina Kilnamona it's uh, Clooney Quinn six points here it is exactly a 10 point lead for Ina Kilnamona here at the half time break as the players just going over right down here in front of us and that'll give us time we'll be back with much more chat as we take the first of our break this afternoon looking down on the sideline players of course no dressing rooms and uh, so it could be a very short half time. Do join us again just after these. The championships this year and hope they get on. Brilliant. Best of luck. We are open uh, Monday to Saturday, half nine to half five. And just to let you know, here in Hermitage in Innes, uh, call us, check out our Facebook page for any contact.
in what is at the moment been a very for one-sided first half between Aina Kilmona and Clooney. The breeze is favouring Aina Kilmona, but the scoreline is definitely favouring Aina Kilmona and a 2 10 to 6 point scoreline. Eamon, what, what did, note did you pick up in the first half watching this game? I suppose from the very start, I suppose Aina Kilmona have, have really set down a marker, you know, from the very start. Their movement in the forwards was, was unreal. The two corner forwards, the two boys are very lively. They're coming to the middle, they're moving out and uh, they're getting some great scores, you know. So, th so the movement, the work rate, is very much uh, on the strong for Aina Kilnamona. Clooney Quinn, a little bit lackadaisical, um, you know, letting too much space. I, I know we're social distance and everything, but we need to get up, you know, they need to get up closer to them. Um, they're giving them too much space, and it looks like a runaway train at the minute. Do you think that the conditions here with the breeze is going to have any impact on the game, or was it just the fact that Aina Kilnamona simply have too much at the moment for Clooney Quinn? I don't think the breeze, look at it, it's not that bad out here. Um, it's lovely conditions and a little bit of a shower, but it, it, that I don't think the breeze is making much of a difference. The Aina Kilimona, the way they're moving, their work rate, everything is, is just way superior a, at the minute. So I don't think the breeze is going to make much of a difference. I suppose one comment has been going around the stadium here. I suppose the, small, the, sta the, the lightly attended stadium here has been actually, in fact, the 11 wides that have been hit by Annie Kilimona had, had half, they been going over, I suppose we wouldn't really need to be here for the second half. It, was, it has been such a dominant performance by them. Yeah, look at that, that atmosphere. I suppose even when, when they get the scores and when the, the two goals went in, there's no, there's no atmosphere here, which, which is a pity, which is a pity because if there was a crowd here, you know, that would rise everything, you know. Um, but look at, they're going well, what can we do? That's the way it is and we have to put up with it. Um, the, I suppose one of the stars of the shows have been the, the youth of Aina Kilimani, especially uh, Aidan McCarthy at wing forward, a serious target man for the ball. I suppose Jason McCarthy, as we discussed beforehand, sweeping up everything be in, in behind and definitely the performance of uh, Keelan Guiler and also Conor Hegarty. Yeah, Keelan Guiler and Conor Hegarty, the, the two of them have been very impressive so far. Their, their movement, their work rate. They don't stand for a second. Uh, the two boys, the two cornerbacks, are having some job to stay with them. Uh, if they can keep that going for the whole game, they, they're going to. They're they're a serious threat. The two of them, you know. Uh, even Evan at, at full forward, he's pulling them in. He's holding it up there. Great movement for the goal then as well. That the, the first goal that that uh, Connor Hegarty brought through, gave it to Davy Fitz and onto Evan. Great finish, you know. So their their movement up there, the, the young fellas, they're flying it, flying it. What do you think Tony Quinn need to do, I suppose, if the breeze is to their back and worth anything in the second half? What would you do if, you, if you're in their position? They're 10 points down. They know that they're still in contention next week, irrespective of the result. But does it, would it be any good to be going into a game suffering a 10 or 15 point defeat? What would you tell them now if you were the Mike Duggan, the Tony manager? If you look at it at this stage, I suppose they have nothing to lose. But they, they, they need to up it, you know. They need to up their game. Um, a lot of them are being very lackadaisical about it, you know. Um, this will go really out of hands altogether if, if they don't pull up their socks. So they have nothing to lose now, you know. Look, they are down, you know, what is it, uh, two ten to six points. Um, Lucky enough to get the last two scores, I suppose, there to keep them somewhat in contention. But uh, they need to have a cut at it, you know. Um, they have nothing to lose. So, well, OK, I know they're going to be back again in, in next week to have another cut at it, you know. But um, you don't want to go out of here getting bet 15 or 20 points, you know. So uh, have a cut at it, you know. Would you think that it possibly could come back into the proceedings here? And if what would you, what could go wrong now for Aina Kilimona? Could complacency set in? Could they say to themselves, this game is over? Or ha you've been involved m hundreds of times yourselves. What could go wrong for Aina Kilimona this half to allow Tony to come into it? Yeah, sure, it, it, it can happen. It can happen a lot of teams if you go so far ahead and it's coming so easy to you, you know. Um, the complacency can sit in that... that you know, you could, Clooney Quinn could get in for an old goal and make a game of it, but look at, I think the movement by looking at the at the forwards in Aina Kinlamorgan and Fergal Hegarty is up and down the line there, he's he's keeping them moving, he's keeping them, you know, they come into their, the, the three little diamond shape in the middle and then they move into space. So, I, look at, unless Clooney Quinn get a goal very early and get going, um, I think Aina Kinlamorgan could win this by 15 points. Um, from other matches th at the moment, now at the moment we got early results that um, um, uh, Clannara were winning well against um, Newmarket and Fergus, and I suppose other ma the other games that would come in line in the Intermediate Championship, there are tight games going on at the moment in Tulla, Scarif and in Bodike. Um, I suppose the teams are getting ready to come on here again, I suppose that we've still co another couple of minutes to go actually before the throwing, but it's going to be, what I'd say, a difficult game for Tony Quinn, I suppose now they're probably looking at what they can get out of the game for the next cup, for the next half and for the next half an hour, and we we'll just see how it pans out. Yeah, sure. Look at as I say, Ina or, or Clooney Quinn have nothing to lose now at this stage. You know, let's 
let's throw everything at them and see and see can they get themselves back into this game and, and make use of the game this evening, you know. Okay, so we hand back now to Sil in the commentary box. Off up and running here in Cusick Park and once again it's Ryan Taylor on the attack. From way out the field this ball is going to curl just to the left and it goes wide once again as again Ryan Taylor enjoying the afternoon or the evening here in the park as well. Emil Foody back on the goal line getting ready for the action as well. Back here bouncing the ball in his hand. Wayne King and the breeze now behind the Cluny Quinman as again a long puck out into the middle of the field at the moment. It's going to be a long ball dropping into the wide open space. Picked up by Killian Duggan. Whipping the ball out to this side of the field, right into the hands of the goals of Seamus Conroy. Long ball across into the centre, ball breaking aside. Luke Harrison trying to get that ball. Jason McCarthy is there, ball going through. It's going to be Ryan Taylor trying to get the ball. Is he going to pass the ball inside to the far side? In the south to the far side, a shot inside, and the ball just taken off the line. Out to the far side, Ronald O'Donnell was the man running out to that ball on the far side. It was the owner Brian was the man that struck that ball right down here to our right hand side, and it's going out for a 65 right down here in front of us. Again, there's a bit of a spark on them as they go across to this side of the field. It's going to be the puck out, out to the far side, and it's going to be a 65. And again, a ball going a pass just by coming back. Where the second half is only seconds old here as we drop into the middle of the field, running out to get it. Mike the McNamara is going to be Killian Duggan to take this 65 once again for Clooney Quinn. And again, placing this ball, sparking run by uh, by uh, Ryan Taylor in the middle of the field. They are setting up that. But it's going to be Killian Duggan on the 65 metre line. Your commentary compliments of Blossoms on the go. A garden centre in Hermitage. There's Killian Duggan going back, throwing up that piece of grass down to the far side, Eamon Foley organising things inside around the goal, I don't think this ball will actually trouble him inside around the square on this occasion because Killian Duggan will no doubt have the distance on this one and from a Clooney Quinn point of view, the accuracy is important as well on this occasion as he gets ready to strike this ball down here to our right hand side, ball high in the air, dropping it in and the umpire goes over, raises the white flag as the ball goes straight over the bar 210 to 7 pints, Einick in the morning lead here as we're just minutes into that second half. Clonlara 11 points, the market 1 6. That's a half time score from Morgani Park and 6 Mile Bridge. And in the intermediate championship, it's Bodike uh, 6 points, but it's Kilanina 10 points. Scarif leading Tulla 1 7 to 4 points. And the St. Joseph's Durabairfield leading Smith O'Brien's on double scores 8 points to 4. Line ball, far side of the field for the Clooney Quinn Right down here in the centre, I can see Seamus Conroy lining up at centre half forward, waiting for this ball, this delivery from out, it comes right down to this side of the field Mike McNamara into the space to go Luke Harrison trying to go away, Seamus Conroy trying to run onto that one, but it's Jason McCarthy just tidies up the house for Ryan in the morning, into the, up to his brother Aidan who was fouled as he was running across the field there, he's been fouled inside the 65 metre line and the man with tin on his back, like once again will place this ball just dead straight in front of the goal, about 55 metres out dead straight in front of the goal, Killian Duggan moving away to the centre and the referee Wayne King just giving a, a little ticking to Mike Mack back here to our left hand side. Aidan McCarthy standing over this ball, dead straight in front of the goal, into the town goal end here with the breeze in his face at the moment. Evan McNamara is inside in the edge of the square, right on his shoulder is Shane McNamara Clooney Quinn captain. Aidan McCarthy with this free, popping this one in, it's high and he's going straight over the bar. Once again the white flag is raised, 211 to 7 points it is here with 3 and a half minutes gone. Once again the puck out is fast and furious. Jason and McCarthy's under this one, the ball breaking into the centre, almost falling into the hands right down here, a right running onto that one, right down there, right in front of us was Ronald O'Donnell, he was put back and it's going to be a free in and uh, for Clooney Quinn and it's going to be placed on the, 40 f on the uh, 45 metre line Yeah, so um, I think Clooney have definitely started a bit bright on this half, like they've had a goal and a point that they missed earlier on, I think that long high ball seemed to cause Heineck in the morning f a, f a few bits of other so we need to see him keep going like this. Just have that attitude and attack away and see what happens. 
It's got to be a free dead straight in front of the goal once again. Looking back up the field, the breeze is once again coming. Well, the rain is once again coming down here in the park. Can you cut the deficit right in front? 2 11 to 7 it is as they're coming up to take this one. The ball is high and it's in the air as he slots this one in from the stick of Owen O'Brien, popping it over the bar. It's two goals and 11 points for Ryan Kilnamona. It's eight points for Clooney Quinn with four and a half minutes gone. Once again, Eamon Foley is fast with the puck out to the far side of the field, coming off the stick of David. David Fitzgerald, but it's Ryan Taylor getting the ball into his hand, taking the shoulder and setting up a Clooney Quinn attack into the space it goes, trying to pick that ball up right inside in the corner at the moment, trying to get that ball away as Ron O'Donnell. Ron O'Donnell being challenged out there outside by Keith White on this side of the field, gets it into the centre, but again tearing out with the ball and letting the ball into the middle of the field out to Ger after Great work back there as well in the uh, in the Eineke in the morning defence, but racing over as Evan McNamara trying to get out there ahead of Connor Harris and he does that, gets the ball in his hand, strikes it from a very difficult angle the ball going in goes across the goal it goes to the left and it goes wide 2-11 to 8 points Ina Kilnamona lead 5 minutes gone in this uh, second half as once again the ball rolls into the middle of the field picked up out there on the far side of the field and driving it as Brian McInerney into the wide open space it goes ball going into the centre Yulika Sullivan going out came out of his hand trying to get the ball back blocks it down now gets it out to Luke Harrison Harrison reeling the ball into the middle of the field trying to challenge it out there but coming away to this Keane McInerney Keane McInerney placing this ball on the far side of the field trying to strike that ball the ball coming off the stick out over the line is going to be a line ball for Ina Kilimona on the far side of the field and that spark that we were talking about in that first half has certainly in fairness to Clooney Quinn has certainly come back into the fray there's no question about that yeah, it's nice to see that still, um, they're definitely more competitive they're definitely a bit more fired up for it um, so the next 10 minutes here is crucial Absolutely. Looking down here, Clonlara 12 points. And again, that's a one, and the market 1 8. Clonlara 12 points. That's the half time score. 1 8 to 8 points. Gareth Lee Tull in that intermediate. There's an attack right down here in front of us at the moment from Keelan Guyler. has gone to the left and it's gone wide. It's Kelly 11 points. Bodike 1 goal and 6. St. Joseph's Door of Airfield 10 points. Smith O'Brien's 1 6. Interesting games. Again, getting updates here on the far side of the field. Once again, it's picked up and on the attack on the far side of the field Owen O'Brien with the ball trying to get it set up an attack Luke Harrison has been busy flipping the ball now changing direction Fergal Lynch going on to this one now the ball is right there between the four players back there on the far side trying to get away with this ball but once again tearing up the field with this ball and in full flight trying to get the ball away to the far side of the field that's brilliant from Keith White now he decides to strike and pops the ball in that's a superb score what a run right up the field the man with four on his back coming right up the field and popping it over the bar Two 12 to 8 points it is with 7 minutes gone and again the puck out is fast out into the middle of the field trying to get that ball away now it's back out over to the first side Jimmy Curry trying to get it inside to Luke Harrison Harrison a strike across the goal and Eamon Foody is there holding solid trying to get the ball away but now loses it back out it goes to this side of the field Yuliko Sullivan trying to control it kicks the ball in Luke Harrison again trying to get control of it now the ball goes back to the ground on the far side of the field but again it's won back by Gerard into the wide open space and it's a deck set up but it's going to be brought Broken up by Shane McNamara, Clooney Queen captain, out to Ryan Taylor. Taylor from way out the field, it's high, it's dropping in, but it goes to the left and it goes wide. The clock will tell us almost eight minutes gone, 2.12 to eight points, great tempo to the game. Yeah, the second half is definitely more evenly contested, um, so we just need um, Clooney to stay playing like that, stay being that aggressive, so it is. And they definitely have an attitude, whatever Mike said to them at halftime, they have an attitude, still, and if you have attitude, that will that will definitely help the situation. Great puck out from Eamon Foley, well fielded there by Killian Duggan, but his strike going out over the line, right down here in front of us, is going to be a line ball for the uh, Ina Kilnamona man, and Kevin Herr at centre half back with six on his back, placing this ball right down here, almost like a man taking a golf shot, placing it right down here, would expect distance than this, and that's exactly what we get, into the space it goes, trying to control that ball inside is Keelan Guyler, he turns on to his right, now when he gets right, taking on Connor Harrison, still trying Rory McNamara trying to strike him from way out the field. It's highest dropping in, and the ball goes in and goes over the bar. He's been a real, real turn in the uh, Clooney Quinn defence. As Keelan Guyler popping it over the bar, as once again scoreboard looking down with almost nine minutes gone, two thirteen to eight points. Right down here to our left hand side, it's going to be a puck out once again. Long ball dropping down. Fergal Lynch is under this one. Up to go for breaking ball out to the centre. Now trying to win that ball back. Unica Sullivan trying to put the ball on. 
Daddy Stick. He does. Looking for space. Pops the ball into the centre. Ball going back to the far side of the field. Taken out there by Sean Mahoney. Mahoney trying to get the ball away. Goes to the ground once again. The referee over carrying. It's going to be a free on this occasion. Right into the goal. It's going to be a free for Cooney Quinn. For the, let's just say over carrying the ball. Again, players going back. One or two players just back here to our right hand side. Taking an awkward Fergal Lynch uh, at the moment. Will be back in his feet very, very shortly. And it's going to be Owen O'Brien that's going to place this one just inside the uh, outside inside the 45 metre line right down here. 2.13 to 8 pints it is. Nine and a half minutes gone here in this uh, second half of this. Just looking down again, Fergal uh, Lynch still receiving creeping right down here in front of us at the moment. And uh, interesting game. So we're just getting an update here from uh, from O'Garney Park in Six Mile Bridge, uh, Clondara and uh, Newmarket. Tidy game again. Always going to be. It'd be interesting to see the Clondera the market approach to this because you know they're going to be there with a shout at the end of the day. Listen, when they go out to play each other, said they'll be going out to win. And um, listen, the market will put up to will put it up to anyone. And Clondera that that would be a tight battle. Such would I know a lot of people would have expected Clondera to win it, but you know it, uh, like the market are tough out and. Uh, all these games will be tough, but as you say, the real stuff starts in probably two weeks' time. And for Fergal Lynch, this first round game is uh, is finished. Uh, Ty Shanahan is the man that's coming on. Fergal is the man that's coming off. Looks like a collarbone, maybe an elbow injury. It looks like he has taken a knockdown there. But we'll stay with Owen O'Brien, dead straight in front of the goal, just outside the semicircle off the 20 metre line. About to strike this one very shortly for uh, Clooney Quinn. Pops the ball in. And again, the umpire raising the white flag. It's 2.13 to 9 pints here. With 11 minutes gone here in the second half. And it, as I said, it looks like a collarbone shoulder injury right down here for Fergal Lynch. We'll find out more about that later on. On the attack, Killian Duggan defending down here to our left hand side. Now coming away with this one, trying to win it. And Ryan Taylor, he's covering lots of ground. Uh, held on to the ball. Held on to the ball on that occasion. It's going to be a free in for Aidan McCarthy and for Ina Kilnamona. 55 out from the goal, about 10 metres in from the stand on the terracing stand on the far side of the field. Wayne King moving away, putting the notebook back in the pocket as Aidan McCarthy places the ball once again. Top scorer in chief in this game for Ina Kilnamona. Fergal Hairty down on the sideline, looking very, very calm, let me tell you. Uh, right down here to our left hand side. It's going to be Aidan McCarthy standing over this one. Your commentary compliments of Blossoms on the go, Hermitage Garden Centre, and as we said to Shirley and all the staff there, delighted to good join us for the weekend. Aidan McCarthy high, dropping this one in, and the umpire nods to the other. The white flag is raised as he sends it over the bar. 214 to 9 pints it is here with 12 minutes gone. Yeah, it's still, let's call a spade a spade. That was a harsh free in my view, anyhow. I feel, I feel it wasn't a free in, um, and you can't afford, um, especially in Clooney's position, um, to have them things going against you. It was, it was just unlucky. I think Ryan Taylor didn't deserve that to be given against him. Line ball is taken past. It comes back to Jason McCarthy. Jason McCarthy half hook. Ball coming into the centre. Jerry Arthur was trying to go for it. But Ryan Taylor commanding in the middle of the field for Clooney Quinn. Looking for support. Gets it out from Jimmy Curry. Jimmy Curry was going to go on the run. Changed his mind. Sent this ball in. And if he only had that ball back again. Again the ball going to the right. And it's going wide. 13 points to 1-9 is St. Joseph's leading Smith O'Brien in the Intermediate Championship. Eamon Foley is back on the goal line getting ready for the puck out. Again, driving out. Now out to this side of the field. It's a long one. It's dropping just inside the 45 metre line. Once again, the tussling. The ball will break into the centre. Picked up inside there by Brian McInerney. He had been fouled and it's going to be a free. It was about to be taken fast for screaming for the ball out here outside and this side with Seamus Conroy. Now the ball is taken to the far side of the field. Up they go for a ball popping into the centre. Kevin Herr about to run onto this one. Again, delivering this ball out to the middle of the field. Again, popping it into the centre. Trying to get it out. Again, Guy out that. That's not Conor Hagerty. Conor Hagerty popping the ball into the centre. That's a brilliant ball. Aidan McCarthy is trying to get it in. Oh, even McNamara just fell out of his hand. It was an absolute banker of a goal on that occasion. But the wet ball popping out of his hand. Ball is cleared for Clooney Quinn. Out to Jimmy Curry. Jimmy Curry putting the ball on the stick. Being chased up along the line on this side. Again, being chased by Conor Hagerty. Jimmy Curry is still in full flight. Out to the far side of the field. Key McInerney coming in. But the ball into the centre. It goes. A breaking ball inside. Back to Jimmy Curry again. One of the scores 
it would be, sends it in, oh, what a score, sends the ball over the bar, he collected that ball on his own 20 metre line, up along the line, passed it twice, fell out of his hand, into the centre, picked it up and popped it over the bar, what a score, what a run, and it's 2.14 to 10 points here, with 14 minutes gone in the uh, second half, what a score, uh, Davy from Jimmy Curry. Yeah, fantastic score there by uh, Jimmy, took the ball all the way in and moved through the defence. I, I, I tell you, one of the moves from East Hill of the game would have been the goal opportunity that Ina Kilimona had before that. The passage of play was absolutely incredible, so it was. And, um, like, if they have two in this game, they probably should have four, you know? Yeah, but you go from a move like Ina Kilimona, and then you see Jimmy Curry doing the exact opposite, and uh, a brilliant passage of play it was. Free in the middle of the field once again, and Wayne King with the hands on the hips, and Aidan McCarthy doing likewise, waiting for the ball to come back, just inside the 65-metre line here, with again 14 and a half minutes gone here in this second half. Two goals and 14 points for Ina Kilimona. It's Clooney Quinn, 10 points, and Aidan McCarthy placing this ball. Wayne King heading for the 20-metre line, right inside around the edge of the square. Conor Hegarty being picked up by Rory McNamara. That's on Keelan Guyler is in there being picked up by Brian McInerney but Aidan McCarthy surely will have the distance on this one and again Keith Hogan inside in the goal. Again excellent on the poke out. He's been very very busy throughout the evening but it is Aidan McCarthy with this high ball. It's dropping in and one umpire once again nodding to the other. White flag is raised as the ball landing straight over the bar. 2.15 to 10 points it is here with 15 minutes gone. Poke out into the middle of the field again going up for it, trying to control that ball and winning that ball in the middle of the field trying to get that ball away is Owen O'Brien Owen O'Brien striking, getting back into the centre goes to Mike McNamara, out to this side of the field Killian Duggan is on the run, hand passing it out to this side of the field, about to be picked up by Seamus Conroy, Seamus Conroy turning onto the right, now going back to the left sends this one in, it's close but not close enough and it's the ball going to the right and it's going wide the rain beginning to fall, misty rain beginning to fall on the park again as Eamon Foody getting ready, I thought we were on the tea break there for just a minute but again the referee Wayne King will probably wait for the next break and play into the middle of the field it goes trying to win that ball on the far side of the field trying to get that ball popping it in it's Conor Hegarty getting it out to David Fitzgerald David Fitzgerald trying to get inside Rory McNamara decides to strike the ball from way out near the sideline it's high it's dropping in it goes to the left and it goes wide and Wayne King must have been listening to us down in the middle of the field there's that 60 second break or a water break right in the middle of the field it's 2.15 to 10 points and at the moment this Clonlara is the uh, Clonlara 15 pints the market a goal and 11 Scarif 8 Tuller 9 pints that's intermediate championship also intermediate it's Bodeg 113 Kilanina 13 pints and again level between St. Joseph's Tour of Airfield and Smith of Ryan's St. Joseph's Tour of Airfield 13 pints Smith O'Brien's one goal and ten. Interesting right around the county. Interesting second half here Davy. but Einekel Namora you know they're on top they're We've been talking over and over about this again, the tactics, but uh, they will enjoy this evening, they will learn from it, but so will Clooney Quinn, and they'll be delighted with their second half performance. In, in fairness to Clooney Quinn, they've definitely stepped it up in the second half. Um, listen, Sil, some of the stuff that's happened out here has been really good, and it's the first competitive game they've had. Both sides have shown some nice stuff. Einick in the morning have shown that bit more. The way they're using the ball, their movement is incredible from puck out. You should see the movement, it's absolutely first class. Um, I, I'm enjoying just seeing it, um, the different types of coaching that's gone into them. You can see they just weren't resting on their laurels for a few months, uh, either team, but especially Ina Kilimona, their movement is good. The young players they've brought in, there's some serious guys, young guys there with um, serious potential going ahead. Um, like young Conor Hagerty, young Guyler, like they are able to play. These guys are able to play, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Talk about resting on your laurels and coaching. Had you a break during the summer? Uh, didn't do much, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> very little. Uh, <laughs> Like, we're back at the bridge, which is great. Um, like, getting to do a bit with your own club is fantastic. So, when we were allowed back, we were back and we are doing a bit. Um, I, I think for a period of the lockdown, I think there was a lot, especially when the GA came out with the statement that you won't play while there's a social distance. And I think a lot of club players got very disillusioned. And uh, I think they're just happy to be out and pucking a ball. I think they actually realise how nice it is to get out in the field still and just hit that ball and be competitive, you know. And do, 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 do they still know you on Wexford, they do? Oh, ah, so listen, we'll get there at some stage, so we will. Um, I went down last week to see the game, the club game, and massive excitement. It was, there was I was at a game last week, um, the Harriers and Ferns, and there was a point in it at the end, and it was 
was helter skelter for us was fantastic. Absolutely. Well, again, the play about to resume here for the closing quarter of the game, the closing 15 minutes of the game here, and at the moment it's 2.15 to 10 pints right out here. 11 pints between the sides with the, the clock again still going on to the mo uh, at the moment, and uh, referee Wayne King waiting for everybody back in the place at, and looking back here to our left-hand side, again looking at the break and play. It's going to be Keith Hogan with the puck out for the uh, Clooney Quinn men back here to our left out to this side of the field setting it up it's going to be picked up in the air great cross by one O'Brien trying to win that ball does loop along the line to this side of the field it's picked up on side to the middle of the field Seamus Conroy about to strike this one that's a lovely score from yeah. Seamus Conroy great work back there as well from Owen O'Brien winning the ball from the puck out and slotting it over the bar 2.15 to 11 pints and we're into the 19th minute of the game the puck out is from Eamon Foody on the far side of the field Aidan McCarthy running on to it. Tony Quinn captain Shane McNamara on his back on the far side of the field ball going out over the line and it's going to be a line ball again Tony Quinn trying to understand that one how that ball went out over the line but it's going to be a line ball for Einick in the morning great work back there by Shane McNamara just keeping the ball out of the hands of Aidan McCarthy on this occasion line ball Evan McNamara on the far side of the field about to place this one and you can expect Keith Hogan to have some players some power to play in this even watching the ball maybe going right past him because we've seen in that opening uh, half Evan McNamara placing this ball so you can expect distance on this one let's see what happens as the mist once again continues Evan McNamara right ball going right into the goal but it's going to the right of the goal as we look at it and it's going wide 2.15 to 11 9 to kill them on a lead with 10 minutes left in this game puck out down to this side of the field again Ryan Taylor how busy has he been into the centre of goals Luke Harrison trying to get the ball into his hand uh, to the far side trying to get the ball Ty Shannon is out there as well popping it out now it comes out to this side of the field trying to get that ball away into the far side of the field trying to get it the way he was in the middle of the field but again it couldn't happen out there David Meskel was down there trying to get that ball away and again Wayne King is there taking control of it it's going to be a ball a free right down here Killian Duggan about to take it right on to this side of the field and the ball dropping right into the centre again on the attack to the far side but again it's broken up out here great work out there outside into the middle of the field but a brilliant run out there by Evan Herrer he's trying to get the ball took control of it on the 20 metre line and came right up taking off his stick out over the line and once again it's going to be it's going to be a free for Kevin Herrer outside his own 45 metre line striking the ball diagonal ball across to the far side David Fitzgerald is under that one so all so is Mike McNamara ball once again going to the ground trying to get it away and David Fitzgerald has the ball driving forward now looking for support there isn't any gets it across to this side of the field but again running onto it is going to be Connor Hagerty now he gets control of it looking up at the options and again into this placing the ball into the centre Ryan Taylor reading it best of all now it breaks inside trying to get it away is Shane McNamara gets it on the second occasion looks up gets it out to Owen O'Brien Owen O'Brien in the middle of the field against the striking the ball right into the corner again they're looking for that attack to the far side Tyke Shanahan trying to get the ball his hand does well gets the ball into his hand Sean Mahoney on his shoulder at the moment Ryan Taylor rise to help out trying to get the ball across to the far side the ball hitting the post hitting the side netting going to the right and it's going wide 22 minutes gone it's two goals and 15 pints for Reineck in the morning it's Clooney Quinn 11 pints the spark is still there Davy. yeah it's, they're fighting really hard so it's definitely a way better second half performance than it was first half so um, they just need to keep it at that now so, um, and keep that competitive but they're definitely a bigger attitude with with uh, Clooney in the second half they're, they're, they're fighting a lot harder they're attacking the ball a bit more so um, it's definitely been better in the second half. It's going to be Connor Harrison. He's going to leave it to Keith Hogan. This free, which will no doubt land right inside in the edge of the square. I would imagine at this stage, Ron O'Donnell is in there right in the edge of the square. Luke Harrison is in there. And uh, Yurik O'Sullivan has arrived there as well. They're right inside on the edge of the square for Keith Hogan to deliver this ball, probably in around Eamon's Foody territory. Now the ball is dropping right inside the 13 metre line. Up to go for it. Ball battered out and battered out well out to Warren O'Brien, goes left, goes right strikes the ball, but again just coming off the t tip of the holly and it goes straight into the hands of Eamon Foody to this side of the field, David Fitzgerald about to get this breaking ball, again being challenged out the other side by Mike McNamara, trying to get inside, David Fitzgerald taking on Mike McNamara, winning the free and it's going to be a free for Aidan McCarthy on the 65 metre line that wide open space we've been talking about that's the space that suits Ina Kilnamona more than anything else yeah, it's, it's th th their use of the ball is absolutely top class. It's not to the man, it's 20 yards outside him, they get to move on to it and um, 
uh, there's be, that just it doesn't happen still. There's a lot of work goes into the things like that happening, and um, it's 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 very well done. So it is so far. Aidan McCarthy has again done a Murphy get him ready for the action for Clooney Crane, but we'll stay with Aidan McCarthy placing this ball the 65 metre line, about four, about five or six metres in from the line, right down here in front of us. Aidan McCarthy with this ball, it's high. Is it going to curl back in? I don't think so. The ball goes to the right and it goes wide. It's 2:15 to 11 pines, six minutes plus additional time left here in this half. As uh, coming on to the side, right down here in front of us again, there's going to be changes down here. Don't come is the man that's coming on we'll keep an eye and just down here to our right hand side to see who's coming off the side but Donegal Murphy is on right now right down here in front of us the man with vast experience on the side and the man I think that was coming off right down here in front of us we'll keep an eye on that we'll get a handle on him in just a few moments it looks like maybe that um, it's Paul Hogan that's coming off the side but once again into the middle of the field winning that ball and over carrying the ball Kevin Herrera been penalised for over carrying the ball and it's going to be a free for uh, probably Killian Duggan that's making his way across to take this one with the, uh, as we head into the closing five minutes of this game. Killian Duggan placing this ball just outside the 45 metre line at the moment for the Clooney Quinn men and uh, may, maybe not but he may try it. Maybe will some player make a run on this occasion? A goal would come in very, very handy at the moment. It's a Scarif 110. It's Tulla 112 and it's Scarif 110. What a turnaround that is. But Ike 114, Kalanina 4 14 pines and uh, it's uh, Smith O'Brien's 111 St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield 13 pines and the market are uh, the market are up by one with five minutes left in this game how interesting it is right around the county but Killian Duggan has fully focused on Cusick Park and on this free for Clooney Quinn as we said outside the 45 maybe 47 or 8 metres out from the Einekill Nemona and he popped up on straight over the black spot long before the umpire raises the white flag we can tell you that it's 2.15 to 12 pints here with uh, exactly exactly just over four minutes left in this first round game in the park as the puck goes once from Eamon Foodie pucked right down the centre your commentary compliment of Blossoms and the Go Garden Centre in Hermitage in Innes as the ball comes out to the far side of the field up they go for it now it's Aidan McCarthy inside surrounded by players getting it out to this side of the field releasing the ball out to the far side David Meskel with the ball now getting it across to David Fitzgerald David Fitzgerald strikes again going across the goal it goes to the right and it goes wide the referee is down here winking just pausing the play for just a moment as uh, we look maybe a change is on teams the man coming onto the side down here is going to be Connor Tierney Con Connor Tierney is the man that's coming on to the Ina Kilnamona side and uh, a fan of course that scored uh, that I just saw there in some of the playbacks over the um, over the, the, the lockdown Davy that superb score against Galway in the 2009 All-Ireland Under-21 semi-final in Simple Stadium Keelan Guyler what an evening he's had making way for Connor Tierney coming off the Ina Kilnamona side into the middle of the field it goes and again it's being picked up out there outside by David Meskell sending the ball across to the far side David Fitzgerald and Killian Duggan, the battle right at your whole evening long. Connor Tierney is out there, takes a knock as he goes to the ground. It's going to be a free in once again. And again, that ball bouncing right in front of him at the moment. 215 to 12 points it is here. Einick in the morning leading with exactly three minutes plus additional time left. And the way the, the light is coming in, and of course, with the weather we've had at the moment, there wouldn't want to be another 20, 30 minutes left in this game, or we'd be on night classes. <laughs> we would be on night <laughs> for sure. <laughs> since we would. Uh, and we haven't got the floodlights to help us either so um i think seven o'clock is, is is as late as we can go still you know but um all in all like listen the second half has been very competitive here and um, fair play to both teams um they've tried to play some it's just not get it and hit it there's some nice play there they're using all the skills of the game so second half being really competitive Again, everybody making way. Aidan McCarthy is the man standing over the three once again for Ina Kilnamona. About to strike this one from way out the field. It's high, it's dropping in, and the umpire making his way out to the white flag as the ball goes in and goes straight over the bar. 2.16 to 12 points with exactly two minutes plus additional time left in the game. Into the middle of the field it goes. That breaking ball. Dunnick Murphy trying to win it, but again it comes right out into the middle of the field into the hands of Shane McCarthy. McCarthy out to David, F David Fitzgerald. David Fitzgerald trying to get through the 
centre but holding firm inside is Connor Harrison to the far side of the field. Now comes out to Evan McNamara looking for support. Being blocked down, wins the ball back, but again coming out with it like a tiger is Brian McInerney. He's been fouled and it's going to be a free for Clooney Quinn on the far side of the field. Uh, Tomas Kelly coming on to the uh, Einick in the morning side, back down here to our left hand side as well. And Fergal Hagerty issuing instructions and calling off players on the far side. Looks like Connor Hagerty might be the man that's going off the side, but it's going to be Keith Hogan that's going to take this free once again hopefully to drop it in around the square from a Clooney Quinn point of view on the far side of the field trying to get that one on the far side and it is Conor Hegarty going off Keith Hogan on the ball high ball from way out the field dropping right into the edge of the square up to go for breaking ball inside trying to tidy up the house inside and doing that coming over the ball to the middle of the field Kevin Howe winning that ball and striking the ball out to the far side of the field trying to get that one away trying to get it into the open space he does David Fitzgerald coming on to try to move the ball but the McNamara brothers arrive in numbers win the ball back out to Mike on the far side of the field out to Jimmy Curry he's the man picking the ball up out to Dunica Murphy picking the ball up in the middle of the field but great work out there outside as well by David Meska trying to make it difficult but still they win the ball back setting up the attack is Jimmy Curry a high dangerous ball into the edge of the square Ty Shanahan in there as well and again trying to get the ball away and again trying to win it but again the right saving today was Eamon Foley inside in the goal line still trying to come over the ball has to be a free out on that occasion frustration in the part of the Cooney Quinn men and Kevin Herr coming to that ball free out for Cooney for uh, Ina Kilimona I, I think Kevin Herr is actually massive to the Ina defence um, he, he's a sitting centre back right um, he won't exactly follow the centre forward out but he'll get back as often as Anton he's got on a serious amount, amount of ball today as Kevin has played really well and he's picking out players all the time. He's cutting out the danger, and um, he's a massive player for Einick in the He's a tremendous link man, as we have seen down there as well at the moment. And uh, we'll get an eye on it. We'll wait for Eamon Foody. We have some updates on scores at the moment. But again, the ball going up into the centre. Again, the referee is going to penalise. He's going to be a free in right down here in front of us. It's Gallop 210, Tulla 113 in the intermediate. It's Bodai 214, Kilinina 15 pints. And St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield are one up. Uh, at the moment against Smith O'Brien's huge games doesn't it there's a very late free coming up from the market as well we'll keep an eye on that as well Aidan McCarthy very close to the line right down here in front of us in the 45 metre line getting ready to strike this one 216 to 12 pines and Einick in the morning will go into the draw um, after the weekend of course for the next round and the winners section of the draw won't make a mighty difference but they're going in with a good commanding performance here and a spirited performance from Clooney Quinn as well and they'll take that into the next round Aid McCarthy getting ready to strike this one. Difficult free just inside the 45 metre line as he strikes this one in. Is it going to steal inside the post at the moment? And the umpire will eventually make his way, and he does to raise the white flag. Excellent free down there outside for Aidan McCarthy as the man coming onto the side here is going to be Jerry Coote coming on to the um, Einick in the morning side. Looks like Evan McNamara is the man that's making way. It's Keith Hogan with the puck out. 217 to 12 points the lead as we are at the moment moment well into additional time by the scoreboard by the clock on the scoreboard it's Keith Hogan with this ball right down to this side of the field long ball I don't think the clock stopped for the break but with that means we're in injury time that's going to be a free in the referee pulling the play back on this occasion it's going to be a free in it's going to be taken very shortly by Owen O'Brien who's more than likely going to pop this ball straight over the bar as well it's uh, at the moment it's a uh, clue no Clara, 18 points. Now market one goal and 14. 210 to 113, as we said. Scarif and Tulla as well. So huge Joel Bearfield still that one up. It's going to be Owen O'Brien that's going to strike this one. He's inside. He's about 35 metres out. Practically dead straight in front of the goal. And at the moment, it's 217 to 12 points. As we look down, there's 32 minutes on the clock. And Owen O'Brien getting ready for coming into the closing piece of action here in this opening round in Cusick Park as he neatly slots the ball straight over the bar. 2.17 it is to 13 points at the moment and we're in well into the additional time. Mike Duggan down on the line. His thoughts as he takes his team into round two will be interesting. David Fitzgerald going up. Ball coming off his stick into the middle of the field trying to win that ball back and winning it back as Jerry Coates sends the ball out to this side of the field. That was part out to Tomas Kelly. Tomas Kelly is there over 
Barry and the ball says the referee and it's going to be a free and it's going to be taken past by Ryan Taylor into the wide open space looking for Lou Housen trying to get the ball inside to one O'Brien takes the shoulder wins the ball and wins it well blocked down on this occasion brilliant ball by Kevin Herrer had the stick in there again into the centre it's the super ball can it be controlled out to the middle of the field trying to get the ball away as Jimmy Curry goes to the ground tries to get up he does rolls the ball into his hand does that goes back to the ground again into one O'Brien ball taken out of his hand and that's brilliant play down here outside in the middle of the field trying to get that ball away as one Fitzgerald for Ryan Akinamona setting up the attack back into the middle of the field it goes and again trying to win that ball back to Shane McNamara taking it from his brother Rory sending a ball into the open space into the edge of the goal but all alone inside there right in the edge of the square is Sean Mahoney again winning the ball for Ryan Akinamona back into the middle of the field trying to win that ball he does out it goes to Conor Tierney trying to strike around to this side of the field popping the ball back into the centre Aidan McCarthy controlling it trying to get inside gets the advantage turns around to the right hand side now striking the ball off the hand off the hurley it's dropping in and the ball going into the hands right into the hands of Keith Hogan right inside at the moment sending it out to the far side of the field and the ball coming to this side one out there in the middle of the field Luke Harrison winning the ball ball going to the ground and it's going to be a free in on this occasion and uh, ball going up to the far side of the field and again Davy, the spirit is there no doubt about it again Ryan Taylor has been pulled back great spirit there in this end of this game Listen, in fairness, like um, Clooney were well down at half time. Uh, we've said that. I, I honestly think their attitude is way, way better in the second half. They fought tooth and nail, and they were in a difficult position. I suppose you're down 10 points, you could throw in the towel. They didn't throw in the towel, they fought it hard, and uh, they've done better. But being honest about it, um, Ina Kilnamona on the night are definitely deserving of, uh, of the lead they have. Well, the lead, uh, well, Clonlara have beaten the market in Elgarney Park in six match race. 19 points for Clonlara, one goal and 14 it was for Newmarket. And again, Owen O'Brien neatly slotting this one over the bar, cutting the deficit once again. It's 217 to 14 points. And as I said, 35 on the clock on the far side of the field. Wayne King again, the ball going to the far side, coming to this side. Now, Eamon Foody with the puck out. Players running left and right into the centre goes, trying to control that ball into the middle of the field and trying to win that ball into the middle of the field is Jerry Cool. Again, they're stalemate in there. Shane McNamara almost had the ball in his hand. Ryan Taylor likewise. Mike McNamara is in there, trying to move the ball away. Again, trying to get that ball away back into his hands at the moment. Seamus Foody was there, but now it comes out to this side of the field to Ryan Taylor across the one O'Brien. Can he control it? Gets inside, and again, we've seen it over and over. Kevin O'Hara was there, but again, there's a foul, and it's going to be a free in for Clooney Quinn just inside the uh, 20 meter line. It's going to be on the 20 meter line to the right of the goal as we look at it. And once again, Owen O'Brien is going to be in a man to place this ball, wiping the hands and the hurlies as we're seconds away from the final whistle in Cusick Park. But it's a commanding. 217 to 14 point lead for Ina Kilnamona with your commentary compliments of Blossoms on the Go Garden Centre in Hermitage here in Innes. Owen O'Brien will he have a blast for the goal? He's like a man that is he does then the ball just coming off it's going to be a 65 and it gets was well worth to go from there. Killian Duggan coming up to take the 65 right down here in front of us again almost in the dead centre of the field as Wayne King heading for the 13 metre line with the hands on the hips right now and as, as we said the final whistle now not far away. Again, will Killian Duggan decide to pop this one in around the square as Niall Malone moving away, the linesman right down here in front of us. Will he decide to pop this one just in around the square? There's little or nothing to lose, and that's exactly what he does. Landing right in, up they go from the side, right on the edge of the square, and the man going up to bring the ball down was Shane McCarthy, clearing the lines as the referee blows the final whistle here in the park. And again, a com a, a, an entertaining opening round game and a spirited second half performance from Clooney Quinn, but not enough but again, a strong, very impressive win from Einick in the morning, 217 to 14 points, Davy. Yeah, listen, second half a lot better, a lot more competitive still. Um, there was some nice stuff out there tonight from both sides, especially Einick in the morning, in fairness. Um, they were deserving of, of that uh, margin of a victory, so it was. But this is our first competitive game, as we said, of the year. I enjoyed it, but it's the different sty types of hurling still I enjoy. Uh, I just don't like get it and hit it. These guys practice their skill they love to be able to do everything and we've seen facets of that out tonight ball into space 
lads running with the ball, lads hand passing the ball. There was great um, bits of skill there tonight, and that's that's what we really enjoy. And the funny thing is, in Clare said we have them players. Them players can play any sort of game they can, and I think that's it's very encouraging. And I suppose from a Clare management point of view, their players played well tonight. The guys that they have involved with Clare and that, and that's a good thing as well. But um, in general, listen. Um, it might seem eight or nine points of a deficit, but there were some nice things from both sides out there. Absolutely. I think they'll be thrilled that this game is, is, you know, first of all, that it's up and running. Now that it's over, now they can go back. They have two weeks now to get ready for that all-important game that we keep talking about. Uh, but they'll take an awful lot from tonight. Well, I'll put it to you this way. I, I wouldn't like to meet Clooney again. I, I think they'll learn a lot from tonight. I think they'll learn a lot from the first half. They didn't attack the ball in the first half without a shadow of a doubt. They, they stood off Ina Kinlamona too much. And Mike Duggan's a smart man. He, he'll know that. And he'll be on to him big time. And you could see it in the second half. They were definitely they were definitely a lot more aggressive. They were attacking it a lot more. And um, they will certainly learn from tonight. Um, Ina Kinlamona... They'll be hard to beat this year, no matter what the story is. I thought they played great stuff tonight. Uh, so they but interesting few weeks ahead. Absolutely. Well, an interesting week in the ahead as well. Just one more to know it's the game. But a good win for Clondera. It looked like a very tight game. 19 points to 114 against the market. That's exactly what you would expect from both sides. <laughs> it is, to tell you the truth. Um, Clonera will be delighted to get that um, win, so the will on the board. Um, a tight game against the market. When you play in a market... As you know yourself, it's going to be helter skelter. Like there's Everton, the kitchen sink is going to be thrown at you, and um, that's what to bring to the table. So a two-point win from Clonera, that that was a good result for him. Absolutely. Well, as we wind up here in uh, Cusick Park once again, a special word of thanks to so many people, to Michael and across the Wayman on presentation and analysis down on Clear TV as well, to Mike and to Jack and to uh, Sean back here on our left hand side, and of course once again to Davy on analysis right throughout the afternoon, and a special uh, word of thanks to Blossoms on the Go uh, Garden Centre in Hermitage and Ennis. That opening round game here in Cusick Park ended on a scoreline of Ina Kilimona, two goals and 17 points. It's Clooney Quinn, 14 pints. Loads of action tomorrow, right throughout the afternoon here, both on Clare FM and Clare TV. But for now, from the Cusick Park, it's bye bye for now. And welcome back. Then thanks very much to Davian Silder for the commentary on the second half of the Ina Kilimona Clooney game. Indeed, I suppose, Eamon, it was probably as we predicted as the rain is coming down now. It was, uh, there was two, ten to six points at half time. The second half, Clooney edged it if it's any bit of comfort eight points to seven what do you make of Clooney's effort in the second half will it stand to them or is it a case of Ina Kilimorn was simply too good yeah sure look we said it at, we said it maybe at half time that they had nothing to lose and, and they came out and they, they, they tried hard in the second half there's no question about that um, I suppose it, it panned out a good bit you know Ina Kilimorn had this game won at half time um, they put in their substitutes they got a few a few new lads on the field you know but um, look at well done to Ina Kilimorn I suppose it's also such a thing as a team suited for a ground. Definitely, uh, Eamon, Aina Kilimona will not want to play too many matches outside Cusick Park the way that they control the game and their movement and pace today was a, a treat to watch. Yeah, their first, their first 20 minutes, their first 20 minutes, look, at they took over this game. Um, their movement, their work rate, uh, they loved the space. The full forward line, the half forward line came out, the full forward line had, had plenty of room for the two young fellas in the corners and they made use of it, you know. So, yeah, Aina Kilmona will want to come here, I suppose, every day if they can at all, you know. So, But there'll be stiffer, there'll be stiffer tests ahead, you know. We are open uh, Monday to Saturday, half nine to half five. And um, just to let you know, here in Hermitage in Ennis, uh, call us, check out our Facebook page for any content.